Apparently not. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to Around the TV Tray with Srethne. It's my uh, my mm. new talk show that I'm hosting every Tuesday night. And uh, I'm shining the light on my pals in Daytona Beach, where I spent most of my time doing stand-up. Um, and this, uh, we're raising funds for the Tiranog Irish Pub, our homeroom, as well as our My Favorite Comedians of the Week, uh, which is which is this week is Jack Napier. Hey, Jack, how are you, bud? What's up, dude? I am not figuring it. There we go. Okay. What's going on, dude? I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm having hey. trouble with this camera thing right now. <laughs> Indeed. I'm digging the guy. I'm just chilling, smoke, smoking a joint, you know, having a good, having a good night. Daytona. I love it. So tell me about your, uh, your, your startup and stand up. Where did you begin? Which room and all that good stuff? All the memories. Uh, where did I begin? Um, I began in, what was it? Uh, bonkers uh, on, on at Grandview live over there on, uh, up a sea breeze, like five, five and a half years ago or so. Uh, because, uh, cause I met, I, I met Sam Ivy in a bar at the tap room on sea breeze when they were doing, uh, some open mic and, Talk to her, and uh, I mentioned that I always wanted to do stand up. I was a musician at the time, but uh, she told me about the uh, open mic competition at at Bonkers over there, and so I went. And you know, the, the rest is history. I mean, I was kind of always wanted to do stand up. I was a musician, but always wrote jokes down. had I had a nice set of stuff before I even decided to do it. You know. For sure, and that's I think that's where I met you was at the tap room uh, when I first moved to Florida and trying to find out the scene and remember the acoustics in that building was just a uh, insane for stand up. And- oh, that place was absolutely horrible. <laughs> um, it it was fun. I mean, you you know you really got got to know your your shit over there, like dealing with horrible people, a horrible crowd. You know, it was it was it was crazy. Man. And that's why I love the Nog so much is because, like, everyone's focused on you for the most part. And everyone's right. chill in the back and all that good stuff. And and um, where else have you performed in Florida and the nation? I mean, mo- mostly Florida. Dude, this camera thing is really fucking me up. I don't know what it is. I'm not. It's like looking into a mirror and trying to do something, but not, like, not realizing that left is right and right is left. It's, like, the total opposite. I'm yeah. sorry, people. This is... uh unacceptable but you know all, all over florida man i've you know from from here daytona to like say st augustine cocoa beach uh it's out in fort lauderdale once or so and i mean just pretty much central florida I'm, uh, i do a lot in so Indeed, that's central florida is where it's at yeah yeah i mean it's where it's where i'm at so indeed for sure and uh, what are some some of your favorite rooms throughout Florida? Besides, uh, well, definitely Tiernanog, you know. Indeed. Shout out! But um, had a lot of good rooms. I mean, there was. I remember. Uh, I don't know if it's still a place, but the 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 wine bar over in in Jacksonville. Uh, that used to be hosted by. Uh, damn, I'm losing it. By um. God damn it, Patrick. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I remember the wine bar. Yeah, Patrick and Spencer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, where else? Open mics has always been really good to me over in Melbourne. Um, also, uh, Steel Reserves uh, sponsor me. I really can't get this down. It's really ridiculous. Have Batman hold it up for you. <laughs> How's what? Have Batman hold it up for you. Oh, Here. he's he's great. Or the Joker. <laughs> yeah, I got I got so so much shit. Just fucking Batman and everything out the ass. It's it's my other passion besides comedy. He's just collecting a bunch of garbage. <laughs> Indeed. What do you think about the Joker movie that came out? Um, I thought it was a good movie, but it wasn't really a, a Joker movie, if that makes any sense. It could have been really any other movie but 
you know, it didn't have to be a Joker movie. It was a good story, but it was kind of, um, you know, it could have been anything. It was a lot like the comedian. It was a lot like, it was a lot like a lot of things. And I think they could have done a better job with the Joker. I think they should have. I want to see the, I want to see more of the Joker from the Suicide Squad, you know, like I want to see that Joker. Like everybody hates him and I know probably, you know, there's going to be a comment or two, but I I like Jared Leto's Joker. He was um it was different, you know. He was just a, a gangster ass Joker. You know? I I loved him. Indeed. I heard all the crazy stunts he pulled off off the camera. And so hopefully the new uh, Batman movie will be just fine. I'm hoping yeah, uh, what's it, Robert Patrick? He, he, he kind of looks like he's gonna be doing, uh, doing some good stuff. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Everybody talks shit about Ben Affleck, but I mean, he really, he came through, he came through hard. I liked him, yo. Batman getting back to shooting people and shit. I liked it. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Oh, man, so you ran a room um uh, at Lulu's, um, so what was uh, where, well, there's days like, will it ever come back and all that stuff? Actually, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm hoping there's there's new owners there now, and so I, I've been talking to them, and I am actually trying to trying to get that room up and running again. But it's probably not going to happen until this whole COVID thing is is done. But you know, it's 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 definitely in progress. Probably probably the beginning of next year. I would I would say that's what I would like to say, but. You know, it's de- it's definitely looking promising. I did like that room. It was an awesome outside room with with nice nice lighting. The food's good. You know, everything. The atmosphere is nice. You know, right by the beach. So, yeah, that was always a really fun time. Absolutely. Do you have any other plans of like opening up other rooms in the area? I mean, not at the moment. Like, just I mean, pretty much like life is just this whole year is shot, bro. Like, I'm just I'm just thinking of this whole entire year is just being uh done like there's nothing nothing really we're gonna do there's nothing more to there's nothing else to do but just wait this out you know like yeah it's a bummer it's, it's crazy man it's, it's everything on hold most definitely it bums me out and so that's why i'm resulting to this like just still do my journalism and still involve comedy some way, somehow and, and raising funds for like all my favorite venues and my people, you know, and getting them more followers. So that's what I'm trying to do with this whole thing every week, like five shows a week, maybe six. Damn, you're doing five of these things a week. Uh, Six of them. I, I, I started a new show on, I'm on uh, Thursday. So I'm interviewing Ross McCoy from the bull and bush. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like 9.30 p.m. all the time. Same bat channel. <laughs> <laughs> all cool. that stuff. But, um, but yeah. Um, so what is your, like, some of your favorite memories from the NOG performing, like, different shows or, like, open mics? What stood out the most? Man, I got, from the NOG, I got a lot of memories. Uh, I've, I've done, a, done a lot of sets at the NOG. I've done a lot of jokes at the NOG. Um, I've had, I had a couple orgasms at the Nog. <laughs> I mean, the, the Nog is, you know, that's, that's our home base out here in Daytona, man. Fucking, you know, big up to, uh, Zach Bennett, hell Satan, buddy. Uh, sale Hayden, whatever you like to say to me, but yeah, that place is, that place is great, man. Had so many good memories. Um, I, I can't even count it, man. Every, every time I'm there, it's always, it's always something different and uh there's always always some new scenario that's happening you know like i, I love that place same any, here any in particular though like man i can't i know there was a whole you know everybody wants to talk about the whole serial killer uh chick i uh i forget her name net ness net nelcy tetley the whole ser- she, serial killer she was gonna kill me she would uh she would get me all wined and dined on some PBR and crack cocaine and she was gonna take me home to her place and saw me in half. Like luckily the luckily the cops got her, man, because you know me, I'm a sucker for some drugs, man. Fuck. 
<laughs> oh man, she never offered me any. I was so mad. I'm like, oh, oh man. Yeah, God damn it, this bitch didn't want to kill me. That sucks. And I think she doesn't like dark meat or something. <laughs> it's probably something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, you just. I love you. <laughs> smell the addicts. <laughs> And I love your jokes too, by the way, because a man like you and I have like the darkest sense of humor. Uh, uh, there's like Kevin and Andre and stuff too, but man, we go really dark, and that's what I love about the Nog. It's like you can be as freaky as you want, weird as you want, and if people get offended, Zach always tells people to jump off the bridge nearby, and so <laughs> that's what I love. Sure, he, does, most. he does do that. Yeah. Oh man, so um. Let's see here. Um, what else should we talk about? I mean, there's some. Oh, there, where there's some times that we drew, like went out of out of the city to do stand up. Um, what are your f- favorite memories besides passing out on the way back home? <laughs> was, that's exactly what I was just gonna say. That's so funny that you said that. <laughs> but man, I don't know. See, you asked some like super specific questions that I like I haven't even thought about, and like forever like what are some of the shit man i don't i don't know like a lot of my memories are kind of fuzzy too like especially in the beginning when i when i went out of town when i did anything i was like extremely fucked up like all the time and i know that seems strange like oh back in the day you were some but like i've gotten better like if you see me at the nog like yeah chances are I'm I'm through sheets to the wind, but back in back in the day, like I was I was fucked up everywhere I went. So it's kind of hard to think of a particular time. Like I don't know, man. You you like to get deep and specific. I, I feel like Nardwar with these things. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, good stuff. But man, um any um I guess um which other bases shall we cover for you tonight? I know that we had our interview, that our previous interview. Um, have any of those answers changed? Shall we go back to those roots? I just, yeah, I feel like the whole, I feel, I, I watched it not too long ago. I'd say maybe four or five months ago. Like maybe, you know, it wasn't too long. But I remember, because I remember as, like hitting you up and being like, hey, can we do, you know, another one of those little interviews? Because I wasn't feeling like it was necessarily representative of, the, the person that I have become over the years, but um, excuse me. Unfortunately, you said that you don't do these any don't don't do those anymore. But I guess this is this is the next best thing. What were some of the questions? I don't I'm I don't really remember. I'll try my best to remember them. So uh, we'll start off like um, what inspired you to perform stand up comedy? I think that was the first question I asked back then. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. I remember that one. I mean, I just always wanted to make people laugh. Like ever since I was a kid, I remember being in school, you know, just being the class clown, just like anytime I could get a laugh, I, I would get a laugh. Like whether it be like falling out of my chair, you know, from like, remember you, you would like lean back in the chair and try to like balance on the two feet, on the two back feet. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Like I, I would just bust my ass just to get a laugh. It, di- it didn't matter. Like I always just, I always just wanted to laugh and, like what inspired me? I remember like the first stand up I saw was was Bill Cosby. I don't, I don't know if I would necessarily consider him an inspiration. Like uh, I mean, obviously he's you know he's he is what he is in his field, but I wouldn't consider him an inspiration. But just like since then, it's just always been like you know I just like to make just want to make people laugh, man. Like for a while when I was a musician, I I always I always said that I wrote music that that teenagers could commit suicide to and. I think I've really grown as a person, you know, like, <laughs> like now I just want you to laugh about suicide and, you know, getting raped by your uncle and, you know, having a drug problem and shit, you know, just, just laugh about it. It's all a joke. We don't need to, you know, do anything crazy. Let's just have a, put a smile on that face. Have a good time. Those are some dark talks for sure. And, and, uh, and then the second question that I answer, asked during that interview was, um, what was the feeling like when you first performed stand up for the first time? Uh, I don't know. I felt kind of just natural, like like a logical pr- progression. Like 
I wasn't nervous like a lot of new comics were because again, I was already a musician. Like I had already been on stage uh, performing music uh, as as the lead singer and whatnot. So like it wasn't like a big shock to the system. I wasn't like having stage fright or anything like that. Like it was just a logical progression. I would have went up there and I had an idea of what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, it took a lot of things that I've been written that I've been writing, you know, since, you know, year, like years before that, just waiting for the time. Cause I always wanted to do it. I always wanted to do stand up. I just didn't know how or where to go to start, you know? And so when that one, there was like one night happened, I just, you know, it, it was easy. It, w it wasn't as hard as, it, as, as I thought it would, it would have been, but. It was dope. Yeah, like I wish I can go back and do it again. Like it was one of those like chasing the dragon highs. Like, you know, like that first set was like you know heroin, man. Just like every time I do I do a set, I'm just trying to chase that fucking high, man. Most very of. very similar. I always think dragon has Bruce Lee, but you can pick heroin if you'd like. <laughs> so, well, um, it's the, you know, chasing the dragon. It's a it's a whole. It's a whole thing. I mean, you would—I wouldn't expect you to know. It's good. You stay a good boy. Who's my I, good boy? I'm your good boy, Jack. <laughs> Goddamn right you are. You stay that way. <laughs> Will do. Um, the third one that I remembered asking was, uh, "What are your favorite uh, comedy special, uh, comedy specials, and comedy record albums?" Uh shit. I don't—I don't remember like actual names of. Like again, bringing back to Bill Cosby, that, that himself was the first one that I heard. Himself was the first comedy album I ever heard. Um, but other than that, like act the actual names of the albums, I never pay attention to because I'm so used to just downloading tracks like illegally from the internet or like hearing them on YouTube nowadays, you know, where it's not like I, I don't sit down and really listen or watch whole, you know, specials necessarily, which I should, I should do. There's a bunch on Netflix I really want to get to, but. Uh, yeah, specials. Like I, I, re I remember himself because that was the first one that I ever, I ever watched. And also, uh, what was the fuck? It was a Chris Rock one that would always come on TV, TV when I was tripping on acid. Like me and my cousin would trip on acid, and and this Chris Rock special came on. The one with like, the one with Shaq being being rich and not wealthy, and you know, getting a toaster with rims on it. You know. <laughs> They spin it, they spin it, you know, fucking like that was, I don't remember the name of it, but God damn it. I, I love that. That special, that special is, is priceless to me, man. For sure. Oh, and, uh, uh, fucking, uh, Jesselnik's, uh, Caligula, I think it was the name of it. That's a really good fucking album. Most definitely. Some of those guys, all those guys are on TV and film and, and, uh, what are your favorite sitcom sketch shows and comedy films? I mean, sketch shows, SNL, right off the bat, man. Like, I grew up with SNL. That shit's always been huge influence in my life. Um, TV shows, Seinfeld, uh, Invader Zim by Jonan Vasquez. He did, he did Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, and he and he had this like Nickelodeon's kid like kid show, like cartoon show. It was amazing. This one episode, like this, it was an alien trying to like conform to human people so he could take them over you know but he had to go to the nurse and didn't have any organs so he started stealing all the kids organs and replacing them with other shit and then eventually he had like five hearts and three spleens and i don't know check out invader zim it's amazing it's like it's super funny but so like dark and 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 gory it's a huge huge influence um how i met your mother is actually i really love that I don't know if it would consider it an influence, but I'm just thinking about TV. And that show is just, that show is great, man. It makes me laugh all the time. That that Barney, man, he's something else, right? Have you seen that shit? I've seen a few episodes. That Barney is funny, man. Neil pa Patrick Harris is, <laughs> he's such a fucking, man. Yeah, I don't know. I fucked up that question, though. Huh? I didn't do that one right. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, was it uh, uh and comedy films was uh which ones are your favorites comedy films airplane is fucking rad i love that the like quick the quick humor man like you know me like i'm really like set up set up punchline kind of 
kind of comic. I don't really fuck around when it comes to telling stories and shit. Like air, air, airplane is just so dope. Just like, just joke, 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 and just so, so, so crazy. Um, man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good funny movies. Half Baked has really inspired me uh, to to smoke more marijuana when I was a child. But I'm, it also like it also did it did it. It just I don't know. It introduced me to like Cheech and Chong and a bunch of different like older comedy that I wouldn't really have gotten into. Um, yeah, American Psycho, honestly, a lot of people wouldn't consider it a comedy, but it's kind of a dark comedy, and that that is a lot of a lot of inspiration for me, man. Just that that, that dark shit, like when you can laugh about, you know, someone, you know, cutting people up and. You know, I mean, that's that's where the bread and butter's at, man. It's, it's great. Indeed, that some of those parts made me laugh for sure. And uh, uh, and if you can go on tour with any comedian, we'll say local and then national and internationally known comics. We'll go with three comics. Uh, locally, mm-hmm. locally, it would. Um, I got. I changed my hand. I got to get this fucking camera thing back to normal. Uh, locally, uh, I always want to, I always talk to Zach about this and I always, I've, I've mentioned a lot. Like I always thought like, like I always wanted to do tour with, uh, me, uh, Zach Bennett and, and Casey Crawford. I always thought that like the three of us had a, uh, uh, very like different, like each of us had such a different style, but at the same time it would mesh well as a, as a whole show. Like I, I was always really wanting that to happen. That, that would have been a really rad. But now Casey's like a famous musician, you know, with virginity. And, you know, who knows if that's ever going to happen. His band is dope. You heard it? It's so good. Oh, yeah. I listen to his album all the time. He goes yeah. live sometimes, too. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I love it. Um, famous comics. Uh, definitely Jeselnik, Anthony Jeselnik, uh, uh, Daniel Tosh. And I, I would find somehow to, to resurrect fucking um, Mitch Hedberg. You know, I would find a way and then his zombie ass would would headline this this crazy ass tour, you know, and it would just be it would be amazing. For sure. Most definitely. And if you can get um, roasted by five comics, uh, top five, past and present, local, national, internationally known, which ones would you pick? I mean, obviously, Jeff, Jeffrey Ross, because he's just the king of the, the roasters. The roast master general, right? That's what they call him. Mm-hmm. But um, get roasted. I don't know. I mean, I probably the same people that I would want to tour with. You know, like I guess that's seven. It's no, that's yeah, seven people, including Jeff Ross. But I don't play to your rules, Sareth. <laughs> I got seven people. There you <laughs> go. We'll go I, off. I play by my own rules. <laughs> Indeed. Um, and I was going to ask you where they can find you on the line and on social media, but I have that scrolling on the bottom for you for the next question. Uh, where, do you okay, see your, cool. uh, where do you see your comedy career in the next five years? Well, fuck, man. That really depends on how fast this COVID goes away, huh? Absolutely. Shit. I'm scared. Like, I have, like, I still have stuff booked for, through, you know, from like September on. I really hope that that, that stuff still happens. But I mean, like, hopefully. Like I've been really thinking about like moving out of here and going to, you know, a different scene. Like I don't know about New York City, but maybe like Austin, Texas, or even try out maybe Las Vegas or something. Maybe eventually get to California. You know what I mean? But um, I mean, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be like crazy and and say that oh in five years I'll be famous or anything. But I would like to think that in five years I'll at least. Uh, uh, at least not have to work my my day job anymore. You know what I mean? Most definitely. Like, like I'm down to three days a week. Just you know, let me get the rest of those days, man. Let me get the rest. Indeed, for sure. And um, let's see here. Um, uh, what is your favorite joke a comic has ever written? Hmm. Damn, you asked the craziest question. Um. Oh man. Uh, 
<laughs> it would. <laughs> He's going to hate me for saying this, but I, like I, the one that always makes me laugh is so stupid. Yo. Casey Crawford wrote this joke about about when uh, Domino's Pizza was changing their name to just Domino's and something about how like, yeah, we always called it a Domino's Pizza pizza or something like that. Of course, that doesn't do it justice at all. And you have no idea what I'm talking about, but it was a really funny, funny joke. I mean, we're, if we're talking about famous people. Uh, m m and most of it is like, is Mitch Hedberg, man. Like, like an escalator does isn't out of order. It just becomes stairs, you know, like shit like that. Like, um, Anthony Jeselnik has a really great joke about wanting a wanting a motorcycle when he when he was a kid and he went up to his mom like, you know, I want I want my dad's old motorcycle. Uh, I want I want. Fuck my my father rode a motorcycle when I was a kid. I want I want a motorcycle when I was younger. My mom said, you know, like that's out of the question. You know, like your your father died on a motorcycle. I'll just give you his fucking you know shit. Like I like those quick fucking I like those quick jokes, man. Indeed, I I definitely I like when when I, when all I... those jokes, all those jokes. I'm sorry, every comedian just now that I said that that their joke, <laughs> man. I, I see that um, inspiration of Mitch Hedberg a lot on uh, when you ever when I see you perform on stage, so it's it's pretty neat, um, all that good stuff. And and are there any final shout outs you'd like to give out there to like all the viewers that are watching presently and uh, and in the future? Uh, just uh, I don't know. Hey, if if you're watching this after COVID, I'm I'm, I'm glad we made it out alive. If if you're not, then fuck, we're still here. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really have anything to say. I don't. Who's out there? Um, there's. Who's, a, who's mm -hmm. out there? I want to hear them screaming. Like I want to hear people screaming through my windows. I don't know who you are, but I don't know. Thanks for watching. Uh, whoever, whoever did watch, you know, make sure you watch more, watch more of this guy's, this guy. Whoa, the other way. This guy's, this guy's stuff. He's, uh, he's really great. Um, and thank, thank you for watching. For watching this episode i know you probably don't know me but i'm pretty amazing and i'm uh you'll know me soon enough you're already a local celebrity in daytona so i am a local celebrity <laughs> i can't walk down the street without people honking their horns at me i mean they'll lean out of their car windows and just scream hey get the fuck out of the road you junkie <laughs> it's always <laughs> like one of my favorites <laughs> oh man um, but yeah, we're raising funds for the Nog um, that's scrolling on the bottom, uh, and and Jack as well, and um, getting them followers up as well during the COVID times, and and hopefully we open back up again because so I can listen to Jack and make have him make me laugh all over again at the Nog, and and because I miss you, Jack, I really do, and because you're like the bee's knees, always up for hugs. Thanks. So when we can hug in, we'll give each other a hug. <laughs> so awesome. yeah, can, let me give myself a shout out real quick. Just come to uh, follow me at Facebook at uh, comedian Jack Napier and uh, Instagram at Jack Napier ten twenty two. Also TikTok, I do some TikTok videos, so come check that out. I've been slacking lately, but I'm getting back on it, yo. Just you fucking see Jack Napier ten twenty two. Come check it out. Absolutely, follow him on all all that stuff. So thank you again, Jack, for being a part of um around the TV tray with Sareth Nay. And, um, Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for having me, bro. You're welcome, but I can't wait to see you in, in person again. You too, man. Awesome, brother, man. I love bro. you, dude. I'll love see you, you later. Sweet. Bye. Later.